In today's session, we're going to look to explore the intersection of health, technology, and also art. And I'm sure you'd all agree, so far today, there's been some, some great presentations. I recently returned to live in Australia and was sitting in a cafe writing my obituary when an old colleague passed by asking, what are you doing here? Writing my funeral speech, the words kind of fell out. Thankfully, that obituary <laughs> was a speculative exercise that I set for myself. Dreaming really, really far ahead and looking back allows us to map out the steps we need to take. And the certainty of death seems like a really fitting place to start when we're talking about the future of health. So I guess in simple terms, we're talking about the points between birth and death and how we choose to spend our time between those points. So I want to introduce these three themes that I believe are invaluable if we are going to create things that will take someone beyond themselves. And vulnerability is considered a weakness. It's a devalued virtue of human condition. Serendipity is something that I've experienced that happens outside of myself when I'm willing to put myself into an uncomfortable situation. And if we are going to fulfill the brief of transcending someone, then taking the exquisite risk is undoubtedly part of the job description. So Lucy introduced us to this concept of, of vulnerability. And you spoke about it being a, um, sometimes a personal choice. There are those people that are more open to vulnerability, and there are those people perhaps not. We know in healthcare that more often than not, vulnerability is forced onto someone. But I absolutely believe there's a perverse necessity in vulnerability to drive the absolute best work. So this is, you might recognize it, but this is, this is Jo Milne. She's an absolute uh, inspiration. Jo Milne was born and she was profoundly deaf. And when I, when I met with her and spoke to her, she said that the only real hindrance, and that was her choice of word, hindrance, it sounds like a minor bump in the road, her only real hindrance of being profoundly deaf is when she was a child, people would have to look at her so she could lip read. As a teenager, she was incredibly confident, she was proactive, and she did a huge amount uh, for people with disabilities to improve services. Disaster would really strike Jo in her 20s when she started to notice her, her eyesight was deteriorating. It was then established that she had uh, Usher syndrome and that she would ultimately become blind. For Joe, this was absolutely crushing. It was a sight she relied on. It was going to make her both blind and also, also deaf. After a lot of uh, discussion and deliberation, she made the decision to have a cochlear uh, transplant. Anyway, she had the operation, and it was a huge success. And her doctor said it beautifully. She was hearing for the first time, which was extraordinary, but she was also carrying the emotion of her future sight loss. Through her experience, through her vulnerability, she has gone on to do some absolutely amazing things. She is just back from Bangladesh, where she took 500 hearing aids to the children there that couldn't hear. And she talks about the moment when those children heard their parents' voice for the very first time, and all of that through her endeavor. OK, so as we move through these three themes, uh, the second is serendipity. Now, for me, this is absolutely open to interpretation. Lucy describes it as more of an attitude rather than a mindset. But I, I fundamentally believe it relies on, on chance. And whilst you can't create it, I think perhaps pharma and the creative community is an extension of that does a reasonably good job of perhaps ruling it out or certainly not been as open as, as we really could be. Now, don't get me wrong, I think over the past few years there's been real progress m made in terms of the compositions that teams, of teams that are trying to solve problems. It's much more collaborative and multidisciplinary. We often see scientists working with creatives, doctors working with software engineers, we've got user experience specialists, nurses, and they, on they are coming together. But from my point of view, it's still within quite a traditional uh, lens or, or convention, basically. And I really think that we can open out to completely different uh, perspectives and perhaps the positive repercussions that that might bring. So when we'd identified that we wanted to look at both the very metaphorical and the very literal bleeding edge of health, and we identified we wanted to connect them with three themes, the next aspect was really understanding or, or identifying what they would be. 
So I was at home and my phone goes and Lucy's like, I've got it, I've got it, I've got the three themes. And the first one that comes through is vulnerability, which I think is absolutely key in terms of driving great work. And then serendipity, which I thought was a really interesting concept for us to explore. And then the third message comes through and it's exquisite risk. And I instantly absolutely loved this concept. I think it's incredibly beautiful and I think it's really quite powerful. For me, it's talking about a risk that's really worthwhile that is designed to perfection. It's about an experiment that is meticulously planned. It's about taking a step forward in the evolution and considering every single detail. The next film is pretty gruesome. So if you're in any way squeamish, please just close your eyes or, or look down. It's a true story. So this is, this is Tal. I was with Tal on Tuesday. I said I was going to come and talk at Cannes. And Tal's like, you've got to use this film of my own open heart surgery. It'll really help you explain your point. So it turns out that Tal is a plumber. He's a heating engineer. Now, fortunately, Tal has a Marfan syndrome. That can affect the skin, it can affect the skull. But in Tal's case, it affected his heart. And as the blood beats around the body, over time, his aorta uh, it expands, it enlarges, it bulges. Um, and it, when it came to, I think the year was 2000, the decision was made that really what Tal would need to do is go for preemptive surgery. So it was explained to him that they have to cut open his chest, they'd be putting in a metal valve, a prosthetic aorta, and he'd have to potentially live on um, a blood thinning, life debilitating treatment for the rest of his life. I described Tal as a hero. He says he was a coward and just did not fancy that at all. As I said, he was a plumber. So he thought he'd go away and he'd come up with his own solution. And he thought about like a hose pipe. And if a hose pipe expands, you simply wrap tape around it and the issue's fixed. Which was his ex exquisite risk for his condition. So he went away, he did all the imaging, he did the CAD drawing, he did the manufacture, he did the sterilizing, and then this Medical tape was used to wrap around his aorta. The operation took place in the early 2000s. He's now absolutely alive and kicking, living a great life, free of medication. He took an exquisite risk that he designed to perfection. So I said, I said at the start that the future is bright. For me, it comes down to our ability to work with the likes of, of Lucy and the global superstars to support and facilitate uh, their innovation at the real bleeding edge of, of healthcare innovation. But always in our mind, the people on the front line, the everyday healthcare heroes who are working and supporting patients all over the world. And what we need to make sure is that as we're driving forward to those healthcare innovations, we always have the likes of Dr. Ralph, Tom Lynch, Teresa Chin, Matt Eagles, John Jackson. We always have them front and center of our mind so that we can use creativity for good and drive forward with meaningful, meaningful innovation. Thank you very much.